Sabayan nyo kami sa apat na minutong ehersisyo para sa kalusugan ng ating katawan. Let's go! everyone. Hindi ko alam kung morning or afternoon to. Uh, basta, have a nice day sa ating lahat. So, my topic for today, it's all about sustainable development. But before that, let us define first what is sustainable. Sustainable is an adjective for something that is able to be sustained. Something that is bearable and capable of being continued at a certain level. So, sa madaling salita, ang sustainable ay ang ibig sabihin ito ay kayang panatilihin ng isang bagay. Let us also define the word development. So, ano na ba itong development? Development refers to the gradual growth of a situation that becomes more advanced and strong than the previous one. Defined as an evolutionary process in which the human capacity increases in terms of initiating new structures, coping with problems, adapting to continuous change, and striving purposefully and creatively to attain new goals. In short, ang development ay isang pagbabago, pagpapalit, or change away. Charat. So combining these two words, we form sustainable development. This refers to the development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generation to meet their own needs. An approach to economic planning that attempts to foster economic growth while preserving the quality of the environment for future generations. It is an improvement but it doesn't compromise the nature or the welfare of the future generations. May pagbabago at may progreso pero hindi may sasaalang-alang ang ating kapaligiran, ang kagandahan ng kapaligiran at ang magiging bagong henerasyon. So, if we talk about sustainable development, this means having this two improvement of lifestyle and well-being while preserving natural resources and ecosystem. Now, let's talk about 
the pillars and major components of sustainable development. First one is the economic sustainability. Ano nga ba ito? It refers to practices that support long-term economic growth without negatively impacting social, environmental, and cultural aspects of the community. Sa madaling salita, economic sustainability is an integrated part of sustainability. It means that we must use and sustain resources by recovery or recycling things. In short, or in other words, in, it supports economic growth while preserving resources para sa mga susunod na henerasyon. Example of this is we commit um, when we commit to purchase the majority of our clothes from thrift and second-hand stores or ukay-ukay, yung pagbili natin ng mga damit sa mga ukay-ukay. Diba? Uh, P.S. May benta po si Clarice Joy Palisok. Uh, may online selling po kami. Bili po kayo doon. The next pillar for sustainable development is the social sustainability. It encourages communities to promote social interaction and foster community investment while respecting social diversity. Sa madaling salita, ito yung pakikipagsalamuhan ng isang tao sa ibang tao nang may respeto sa kung ano ang kanilang pagkakaiba. Example of this is reconnect with a friend or family member by calling them once a week or participating in community service activities. And it is also a process for creating a sustainable, successful places that promote well-being by understanding what people need from the places they live in and work for. So the main definition of social sustainability is to sustain the welfare of all people. For example, having a fair labor, labor practices. All workers are entitled to have a minimum wage, overtime pay, and some incentives. And also, mayaman man o mahirap ang isang tao, um, they should have a fair healthcare and a fair social security and having a fair living conditions. So it means that all people are entitled to have at least a shelter, adequate clothing, and enough food on their table. And also, of course, all children's Lastly, the third pillar for sustainable development is the environmental sustainability. It's the management of our physical environment in a way that supports living within ecological limits, protection of natural resources, and meeting the needs of communities without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. So, what are the ways to be more sustainable in everyday life? We can avoid single-use plastic products as often as we can. We can use bike or just walk in terms of using motorcycles or car. We can turn off the lights when you leave a room. We can utilize re reusable products and we can buy things with minimal packaging or with minimal use of plastics. The relationship among these three pillars can be shown using a Venn diagram. If we only achieve environmental and social, that is bearable. If we only achieve social and economic, that is equitable. If we only achieve economic and environmental, that is viable. Only through balancing the three, can we achieve true sustainability? Let us further discuss the three pillars. Society plus environment equals bearable. It means that the society works towards lifestyle adjustment or fitting your lifestyle o kung ano ang may ng environment 
we just need to adapt. We doesn't go beyond para mas ma-preserve natin ang ating kapaligiran. Next one is the society plus economic equals equitable. Ibig sabihin nito ay yung pagiging pantay-pantay base lang sa pangangailangan ng tao. Kung ano, kung ano lang ang kailangan, yun lang ang pwedeng makuha. To preserve the resources at di tuluyan maubos ang mga ito. And then, the viable. It is economic plus environment is equal to viable. So, ang ibig sabihin lang ito, the entrepreneurs must support economic growth while protecting our environment. And these are the examples of sustainable development. Number one is the wind energy. The use of wind to provide mechanical power through wind turbines to turn electric generators for electrical power. Actually, Philippines is one of the largest wind power generators in Asia. Some of the wind farms in our country is located at Ilocos Norte, Rizal, Guimaras, Aklan, and Mindoro. The second example is the solar energy. Any type of energy generated by the sun and can be captured with various technologies, primarily the solar panels. You know that, that the Philippines rank number one among developing countries in Asia and fifth worldwide in terms of using solar energy. The major solar farms in the Philippines can be found in Cavite, Pampanga, Ilocos Norte, and Cagayan de Oro. And the third example is the hydroelectric energy, a form of energy that harnesses the power of water in motion, such as water flowing over a waterfall and in man-made dams to generate electricity. Hydroelectric power plants in the Philippines are located in Pangasinan, Binguet, Laguna, Isabela, Bulacan, Nueva Ecija, Ilocos Sur, Lanao, Dabao, and Misamis Oriental. Aside from different sources of energy, another example of sustainable development is crop rotation. Defined as the successive planting of different crops on the same land to improve soil fertility and help control insects and diseases. For instance, or for example, the most common that we see here in the Philippines is planting rice and then after that planting of corn. Nagkakaroon ng shifting from rice sa susunod corn naman. Next and last example is water efficient fixtures refers to fixtures that use a lesser amount of water to accomplish everyday activities. Example of this is our low flow faucets, showers, automatic shut off faucets, dual flush toilet converter. Those things are used or maganda to conserve more the water. So, ginagamit yung mga yun para mas makonserve ang ating katubigan. The next topic we are going to discuss is the Millennium Development Goals. Let us start our discussion with this video. In the year 2000, 189 leaders from around the world met at the historic Millennium Summit in New York. According to the then Secretary General of the UN, Kofi Annan, the UN's role for the next millennium will be crucial, making it a focal point for joint efforts. In a word that presents worrisome statistics that endanger the perpetuation of generations to come. One point two billion people live with less than one hundred dollar per day. 
800 million people are malnourished. 153 million children are below their ideal weight. 115 million children are not enrolled in school. 97% of these children are in developing countries. 64% of the world's literate population are women. 80% of the world's refugee population are women. 60% of children not enrolled in primary school are women. Every year, 10 million children die of preventable diseases. Annually, 500,000 women die when giving birth or during their pregnancy. In Africa's sub-Saharan region, 1 in 16 women die in these conditions. In countries of the OCDE, the same proportion is of only 1 in every 2,800 women. In the year 2000, 222 million people had died of AIDS. 13 million children lost their parents to the HIV virus. 40 million people live with the virus. Annually, 300 million cases of malaria are detected. Annually, 60 million people are infected by tuberculosis. In 2000, 1 billion people in developing countries didn't have access to drinkable water. 2.4 billion people didn't have access to sanitary services. 14% of the world's population in the developed world produces 44% of the yearly carbon dioxide total. 100 dollar billion are necessary for achieving the MDGs. 0.5 of the GDP of developed countries is necessary for raising the amount. The result of this meeting, a commitment with a set deadline, 2015. So what is this Millennium Developing Goals? This refers to the 8 International Development Goals for the year 2015 that had been established following the Millennium Summit of the United Nations in 2000. All 189 United Nations member states and at least two 22 international organizations committed to help achieve the MDGS by 2015. Actually, this Millennium Development Goals were based from the data that I have mentioned in the video a while ago. These are the plans of the United Nations for the entire world. Let me enumerate the Millennium Development Goals. First one, eradicate extreme poverty and hunger o supuin ang kahirapan at ang kamutuan. Second one, achieve universal primary education. Makapag-aral ang lahat ng bata sa buong mundo. Third one, promote gender equality and empower women. Magkaroon ng lahat ng pantay-pantay na karapatan at oportunidad. Ang apat, reduce child mortality o iwasan ang pagkamatay ng mga bata o ang mga sakit. Number five, improve maternal health o ang maalagaan ang kalusugan ng mga babae Number 6, combat HIV or AIDS, malaria, and other diseases o masumpo ang lahat ng mga sakit na nakakahawa o hindi nakakahawa. Number 7, ensure environmental sustainability 
ang mapangalagaan ang kapaligiran. Number eight, the last one, develop a global partnership for development o magkaroon ng pagtutulungan ang lahat para sa pagbabago at pag-unlan ng buong mundo. Marahil naisip nyo kung ano nga ba ang kinalabasan itong Millennium Developing Goals. Ito, panoorin natin. Listen carefully, SS3B. Back in 2000, the UN created the Millennium Development Goals in an effort to improve life in developing regions by 2015. How far did we get? Extreme poverty rate have been cut in half, but 1 in 8 people worldwide still go hungry. Enrollment in primary education increased from 83% to 90%, yet 1 out of 10 primary school age kids are not in the classroom. Gender equality has been met at the primary school level, but women still hold less secure jobs than men. Seventeen thousand fewer children die each day, but six million are still dying before their fifth birthday. Maternal mortality fell forty-five percent, though only half of women in developing regions get recommended prenatal care. HIV infections and malaria deaths declined by more than 40%. Still, every hour, 50 young women are infected with HIV. More than a quarter of the world's population got improved sanitation, but 2.5 billion people still don't have basic sanitation like toilets. Economic trade continues to improve and aid money hit a record of $134.8 billion in 2013. But focus is shifting away from the poorest countries, countries where these goals are least met. After 2015, we have achieved a lot, but there's still much to do. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyong pakikinig. Lagi yung tatandaan, ang pagbabago ay nasa ating mga paa. <laughs> Adios!